Right smack dab in the middle of our front yard and space, we have our newest addition, one of our green stalk vertical gardens. Guten yardening, everybody. Well, it's been an absolutely perfect day here at Guten yardening, and we've been fortunate enough to be out in the garden almost the entire day. The flowers are blooming. It's just absolutely perfect here in Zone 5, Wisconsin. And in today's video, we're going to take you on a tour of our front garden space so you can see what we have growing and some of the decisions in terms of how and why we've planted here in the front yard and space. So let's go ahead and take a look at our front garden. Well, the first thing I want to do is, especially for those of you who are new to the channel, I want to give you an overview of just what our front yard and space looks like. You can see we've got it made up of seven beds here and each one of these beds are raised and mounded. Now we've made these mounded beds because our native soil is a very dense clay. At least for us, growing successfully in that heavy clay is quite difficult. So instead, we've created these mounded beds throughout the front yard and space. And we've been able to successfully grow in here the last two years. Now another reason why we have those beds mounded up is because, and this is one of the few disadvantages that we found for our front yard and space, but if there's a torrential downpour, there can be some flooding in that area. But because those beds are mounted up, we don't have to worry about the plants actually washing away. Now you can see some of the damage from the recent storms we had. We had two in the past week that were tremendous. Lots of wind, tons of rain, but you can see the only thing that was washed down at all was some of our mulch. Now one of the other things we love about this front yard and space is that five out of the seven beds have full sun exposure and all seven of them have it really except for a few minutes in the morning. So it's a great spot for our sun loving plants. Now one thing we didn't do last year and we tried this year for the first time is to put a little bit of wire fencing around each one of these beds. You know our rabbits are our main pest other than voles here. And what we found is that all it takes is a small barrier and the rabbits seem to go elsewhere. They seem to be pests of opportunity rather than perseverance. And so this has made a difference. The rabbits haven't attacked a single one of our plants inside this fencing. This corner bed is where we've planted our sweet potatoes this year. And we decided to once again plant sweet potatoes out here because last year when we grew our sweet potatoes, even though it was a little bit more challenging to harvest them, instead of say in a container they were bigger on average and they really just performed well and so we've gone with more sweet potatoes and after only about a week and a half in the ground they're already rooting the variety of sweet potato that we're growing in here is a bush variety called vardaman and i would have to say this foliage is really nice here in the front yard and space and it's edible too i think that peppers are going to be the biggest increase in terms of the number of plants that we planted this year over previous years I and mean, they just are so foundational to so many of our dishes and it's easy to run out of them and so we planted quite a few pepper plants you can see in this one bed alone we have about a dozen pepper plants and these are all from seeds that we collected last season so these are all sweet peppers now each one of these peppers has been topped at the apex meaning we cut off the apical stem which should translate to more lateral shoots, which should also then translate to more peppers. Now, I think you've probably heard the term topping peppers before, but if you haven't, or if you don't know what that is, I'm gonna show you really quickly what I mean. This is a pepper plant that has not been topped yet. This top part right at the end is called the apical end. What I would do is to prune this back, I would come right above this little bump, this little node right here. You can see it sticking out and I would cut, and that's something that we've done with this pepper plant already. You can see it's cut at a slight angle here, right up above this node. And then what's going to happen, as you can see from this plant that was already topped, you're gonna to get those lateral stems developing and that bush-like effect. So this wouldn't be here. These stems wouldn't have split if I hadn't pruned this. And additionally, once you cut that apical end, these nodes start to develop more of these lateral shoots. So you can see they're starting to grow here as well. So that's more potential stems. So this pepper plant has the potential now to really spread out into that bush shape that we were talking about. Now, if you'd be interested in and find value in learning more about topping pepper plants and growing pepper plants in general, 
let us know in the comments below. Now weather among other things did cause us to get a bit of a late start out here so you might not see as much in this bed as is actually there. We've got our snow crown cauliflower which has a maturation of only two months less than two months 50 to 55 days grown in full sun and again that's what we have here we have that nice full sun so it's a quick maturing plant and then it hasn't popped out yet but we've got some multi-sown beets that should come up here in the next couple of days and they're a great companion plant for our cauliflower now we haven't really talked too much about companion planting and what vegetables we plant with others but if that's something you'd like to learn more about we'd be happy to create some content around that as well so again let us know in the comments if that interests you this is our destiny broccoli now destiny broccoli has a pretty vast maturation time 48 to 89 days but one of the things we've learned in terms of trying to grow broccoli try and grow cauliflowers that they can be pretty particular and sometimes difficult to get a really good head of broccoli or a head of cauliflower so we're really this season trying to figure out what the exact protocol is you know get that perfected so we don't struggle with that in the future beside our broccoli here we have some green beans which is another great companion plant to put in alongside of the broccoli now each of these beds is surrounded by a four inch piece of this black terrace board. That's what helps us to create the barrier between the mulch and the beds. But this bed is going to need more than just that four inches of terrace board. And these potatoes were planted shallow and we intend to add another layer of terrace board in order to mound them up. This is the first time we've tried to grow potatoes in our front yard in space. So this will be a great experiment to see how well they do in this setup. Now I love the way potatoes look as they grow. I love their flowers, but I do understand that they also die back at the end. And so that loses the curb appeal. But what we can do out front here, if we want to, we can harvest some early potatoes as well. But we'll see how things go as we move through this process. Again, this is our first time trying in our front yard. Now right beside our potatoes is something we did not replant this year, but it self-seeded and made its way back into our front yard. And and that is our chamomile. If you've never grown chamomile, I can tell you it makes a great tea. It has a lot of health benefits and it's another one of those good companion plants. But one thing's for sure, it has the potential to self-seed and come back and come back in quite a few spots. At least that's been our experience. And just popping out in this bed, it looks like we're gonna need to replant a few of these, but we've got our okra. This is a dwarf okra coming up. This dwarf okra grows really nicely up here in the north. Again, we're in zone five. And I know okra is oftentimes something you think of in terms of growing better in the south. But this dwarf okra for us only got to about three feet tall and again, performed really well and kept flowering, kept providing us with more okra even later in the season. And so we're excited to see what this bed is going to turn into. Now, the reason you see multiple of these okra side by side is because we planted multiple, not being sure how good the germination rate would be from the ones that we harvested last season. But you can see, I think that's a pretty good germination rate. Now, this last bed happens to be our longest bed, but it's also not fully planted yet. Now, that being said, this is a tomato bed so far. We have five tomato plants, each one a different variety, and I'll get to that in a second, growing right down the middle of this bed. But we've also got a whole bunch of volunteer tomatoes over here on the side. And believe me when I say this is not the only spot where we've got volunteer tomatoes. Now, we'll make a decision as to what we're going to do with these tomatoes in the future, but we've already transplanted a whole bunch of those to use in other places. And before I get to looking at the rest of the tomatoes, we also have some volunteer onions from last season. And the most aggressive and perhaps dreaded plant that's still growing everywhere on our property, this time planted, I'm sure, by the birds, are strawberry spinach. Yes, it's edible. Yes, it's enjoyable. It doesn't taste bad but it spreads and spreads and spreads. And these berries, the ones that turn red, which everybody loves, and that's the reason why you'd grow strawberry spinach, well, these are the reasons why it's almost impossible to get rid of. Now, this is the first year that we're focusing on growing larger tomato varieties, and we're doing that for a couple of reasons, but the main one is 
you know, if we talk about stuff we still buy from the grocery store, oftentimes what we're looking at are our tomato-based pieces, like our sauces, our ketchups, etc. And so we want to learn more about making our own, which means we need to have enough that we can can and that we can use for that purpose. So if you'd like to follow along as we learn that process, let us know in the comments. Now the five varieties I'm gonna show you here were not ones we started from seed. This is a La Roma, which is a, an Italian type tomato with a 62 day to maturity. And here in the middle we have a big boy tomato. This is supposed to be the biggest one that we planted here out front. Now I mentioned that these varieties are not ones that we started from seed. We started quite a few other varieties, but we're gonna do a separate tomato tour so you can see those in the future. This tomato is a Cherokee purple. It's a nice heirloom with 12 ounce fruits. Again, it should be a nice sized fruit. With all of these, we're going to attempt to do a single stem. Now we've never really tried to grow the larger variety, so we've never grown tomatoes as single stem, but what we want to do is to make room for more tomato plants in here by doing that. But we'll see what that does to our production once we try to grow them in that fashion. Now we will have to trellis all these other tomatoes, but this cherry tomato, which is a sweet 100 cherry, and we have grown sweet 100 cherries before, we've got this in a cage already because it's the only cherry tomato that we have growing up here, and we're not going to be growing this as a single stem. But in a future video, we'll show you what we come up with for the trellising for these and what growing as a single stem looks like. Now we've talked a lot, especially this winter, about taking advantage of even the vertical space in your garden. And right smack dab in the middle of our front yard and space, we have our newest addition, one of our green stalk vertical gardens. And you can see we've got some sweet potato slips in here as well. We try growing sweet potatoes in a green stalk indoors. I think they're going to perform much better outdoors. And you can see these have only been in here for less than a week. So they're just now starting to take root. Now this is soil that we repurposed. And so, you know, when you repurpose soil, you might just get something volunteering to come out. And that's what this summer squash did. Now, because it volunteered, I don't actually know what kind of summer squash this is, but I'm guessing that we're gonna find out here in a couple of weeks because I can already see the beginnings of some blossoms down here. So we'll see what we've got growing in the top of our green stalk. Now at the top of this green stalk, we have some empty pockets, which we're definitely gonna fill in. So you gotta stay tuned to see what we end up putting in the rest of our green stalk. Well, we hope you enjoyed this tour of our front yard and space. In a couple of weeks, this is going to be flourishing with even more green. And I'm super excited to take you along on that journey. We hope you enjoyed today's video and found it useful. If there's something you'd like to learn more about from today's video, or if there's a topic you have in mind that we haven't talked about on our channel, let us know in the comments below. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.